This is the last class of our fast food look at drama. The first week we started off with this foundational idea of where drama comes from, the five menu items of drama. Division, we've learned that drama divides us. Resentment, we learned that drama causes resentment. Attitude, we learned the attitude that comes with drama. Meanness, we learned that the results of drama can be mean. And attention, we learned that drama comes from those who want attention. Our key verse has been 2 Timothy 2, 22-24, which says, Stay away from the evil things a young person like you typically wants to do. Do your best to live right and to have faith, love, and peace together with others who trust in the Lord with pure hearts. Stay away from foolish and stupid arguments. You know that these arguments grow into bigger arguments. As a servant of the Lord, you must not argue. You must be kind to everyone. You must be a good teacher, and you must be patient. Over the last three sessions, we've talked about three things that connected to drama. In the first class, we talked about this idea of what we put in will eventually come out. We fill up on drama, and eventually drama comes back out. In the second class, we talked about the hot, juicy mess of gossip. The last class, we talked about those little tiny morsels of truth, or what we call white lies. In this week, we're going to wrap it up with a lesson that's called Shake It Up. It's time for us to shake things up and change things up as far as how we look at drama. It's time for us not to not just talk about the negatives, but to also look at the positives. It's time for us to truly create a new mix of things. So let's jump in to see what God's word has to say. Titus 3 verses 1 and 2 says this. Remind your people that they should always be under the authority of rulers and government leaders. They should obey these leaders and be ready to go and do good. Tell them not to speak evil of anyone, but to live in peace with others. They should be gentle and polite to everyone. So there's four things mentioned here that we are supposed to be, or are supposed to do. We're supposed to slander nobody, we're supposed to be peaceable, we're supposed to be considerate, and be gentle to everybody. That doesn't sound like a drama queen or a blow-up king. So as we wrap up this series, we need to pop the lid off of our lives and ask ourselves, can I match up to these four things? Are these who I am? Are they who I wanted to be? What are the things that are flavoring my life? When it comes to shakes, you have your usual vanilla and the popular chocolate, of course. But the variety of fruit flavors are amazing. And God actually tells us that we should have more fruit flavors in our life. Galatians 5, 22-26 says, But the fruit that the Spirit produces in a person's life is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these kinds of things. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified their sinful self. They have given up their old selfish feelings and evil things they wanted to do. We get our new life from the Spirit, so we should follow the Spirit. We must not feel proud and boast about ourselves. We must not cause trouble for each other or be jealous of each other. In the mix of our lives, what really shakes up the drama, the gossip, the meanness, the stuff that is going on with your friends and your families in schools is not more of the same. We're not supposed to act like everyone else. We are to be completely different beings by the fruits of the spirit flavored. The new mix comes in a variety of ways. You can mix it up by going to them. Matthew 18.15 says, if your brother or sister in God's family does something wrong, go to them and tell them what they did wrong. Do this when you are alone with them. If they listen to you, then you have helped them to be your brother and sister again. Go to them. How amazing but difficult that would be. But how much would it completely change the whole drama scene if we started to go to each other and telling each other what the problems and issues were what about even in this group right now to everybody watching online? How many of us were walking around, are walking around and holding grudges and hurts? We tell everyone about it, but the person who we're actually hurt by. For the ones who hurt us, there's two things we need to do for them. 
can mix it up by loving them. You can add another mix by praying for them. Matthew 5.44 says, But I tell you, love your enemies. Pray for those who treat you badly. That's hard. That's a hard one. If we started loving people and praying for them, our attitude would surely change. Even more amazing is their attitudes might change too. The whole drama scene would be completely mixed up if instead of turning around and starting more drama, drama we actually loved and prayed. It might not be time to go to them and try to deal with the hurts, but they can't stop you from praying for them and trying to show them love. The last one's a biggie. It's the bottom of the cup, you know. You get to the very bottom of a good shake and all that's left is maybe the syrup, the whipped cream, the cherry. The biggest mix we can do is forgive them. Colossians 3, 12-14 says this, God has chosen you and made you his holy people. He loves you, so your new life should be like this. Show mercy to each other. Be kind, humble, gentle, and patient. Don't be angry with each other, but forgive each other. If you feel someone else has wronged you, forgive them. Forgive others because the Lord forgave you. Together with these things, the most, important, the most important part of your new life is to love each other. Love is what holds everything together in perfect unity. If you forget everything I've said over the last four sessions, and even what I've said today, remember this. When it comes to drama and the mess of all of it, forgive, forgive, and forgive. Do you see the mix on the front end of that verse? The same stuff we've been talking about. The stuff on top, the fruit flavor in the middle, and the bottom of it all. Forgive as Christ has forgiven you. It is one last time to be really honest and real with the drama in our lives. It's time for us to make some new choices, create a new mix, and say that we are not going to be involved in any more in drama and all the things that go along with it. It's time for us to make the choice to not be involved in drama. <sighs> I hope you enjoyed this series as we go into the summer, which is weird to say when I'm in the first week of February recording this. But uh, again, I hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for whatever we have coming next. And as always, stay blessed.